So as we approach week number seven of the MLS season, I decided that I am going to do kind of a ranking and look at the 10 coaches that is likely to get fired or leave at the end of the season. And I might do something very similar to this or do another video before the season ends because, you know, we're only into week seven of the season. It's still a very small sample size of how each team has done and that, now, early on, there's already a lot of rumbling about coaches that could potentially go at the end of the season, which is why here, you know, I have 10 coaches that I'm going to talk about that most likely is going to leave at the end of the year. 10 being most likely he's going to stay at the end of the year to one being he's probably going to be the next one to go or the first one to go at the end of the season. Because after all, we're going to have some coaching turnover at the end of the year. I mean, it's just part of MOS and also part of American professional sports that usually you're going to have at least one coach that's going to get fired at the end of the season. And most of the time, it is because of poor performance. But we're going to start with number 10. And I am going to say the guy that is going to be the 10th likeliest to get fired or leave at the end of this year is going to be Remy Gard. Now... I want to highlight the, the word leave here because, you know, when I put some of the names on this list, you wouldn't think that they would potentially get fired, which is why I highlight the keyword leave because, you know, some of these coaches, even though they are not really kind of like under the hot seat, there is definitely rumors that maybe they'll be leaving at the end of the year. And Remy Gar is one of those guys, despite the fact that, you know, he's been de denying the fact that he is saying that the report of him going back to France and coaching Lyon um, is completely false. Um, we don't know if it's actually, um, you know, we don't know if it's actually him just kind of like play it, play down these kind of media attention and these rumor about him going back to France, or it's just that he's telling the real truth. So yeah, I think Remy Gar probably is number 10 on this list. I know that's going to kind of surprise a lot of people and certainly surprise Montreal fan. But that's why I put him number 10 because most likely he is not going to get fired this season. But there is definitely rumors that said that maybe he could be leaving at the end of the season. And at number 9, for the same reason as Remy Gar, I'm going to put my Quakes current manager Mateus Almeida in this list and again you know I don't think the Quakes are going to fire Mateus Almeida I will be shocked if they fire Mateus Almeida after this season whether if we do very bad this season or we do do uh, pretty good and kind of improve ourselves I don't think the Quakes are going to fire Almeida mainly because you know when they bought Almeida they believe that he can turn around this team and right now, obviously, he hasn't really done a good job, despite the fact that he did get his first win with the Quakes um, this past weekend. But that's because he hasn't really got a lot of resources, and that's what, and that's been kind of the frustration of Mateus Almeida. I mean, you know, you, there's been just so many report about how a lot of Liga MX team are trying to get Mateus Almeida, and these rumor was like loud and clear near the beginning of the season like before Almeida even coached the Quakes in an MLS game there's already a ton of reports of him going back to Liga MX and you know it this is why I say with the Quakes they need to give some money to Almeida and let him decide to spend some money and trying to get the players because with the way that the the front office are not really giving money to Almeida to kind of spend and not really give him the players to work with. Yeah, obviously he, he is going to be pissed off. And, you know, he he I won't be surprised if our front office continue to not give him the players that he need, that he will just get frustrated and that he decided to just kind of step down from this team. So, yeah, that is, and I... Because of that, I might actually think about maybe putting Almeida a little bit higher higher in this list. But, you know, I'm still just going to put him at number 9 because I don't think he is going to be leaving at the end of this season. Hopefully not. Uh, but at number 8, it's going to be Mike Pecky. And this one really hurts because, you know, Mike Pecky, he's my favorite manager in the league that is not named Mateus Almeida. Um, you know, obviously Pecky's. He, his 
his RSL team is off to a bit of a slow start. And, you know, I have here a couple of RSL fans that are kind of a little bit fed up with Pecky and fed up with the way that he has has coached this team. And, you know, I know Pecky has do done a decent job at RSL and kind of like, like done very well in terms of playing very well in the latter part of the year and also got this team into the conference semi-final last year but the thing is this RSL team you know the fan base they definitely want to see this team win and that they don't want to always get off to such a slow start and then eventually kind of catch fire at the end of the year and you know we'll see we'll see it, what RSL can do like I the reason why I really don't want Mike Pecky to get fired is because I'm going to really miss those kind of post-game game rant and those kind of iconic talk, talks that he always get in the post-game interview or even in the pre-game interview. So, yeah, but still, you know, if RSL continue to struggle and if RSL maybe is not going to make the playoffs, then Pecky could definitely be under a lot of pressure. Could be under a little bit of of a um, bit of a hot seat and knowing the fact that you know I think he's now been there for three years usually when you do not especially at now a days in MLS where the coaching turnover rate is just so high and that you know it's almost like when you decide to take over a job you better make sure that you have success with the team or at least give them give the team some some kind of success in the in the playoffs or even in the regular season because if you don't if you are going to just just kind of like holding this team at the same di direction and don't really improve this team then yeah most likely you are going to get fired at the end of the season uh but at seven seven plays and this the guy that is going to be next on the list that most likely could get fired is adrian heath now i was going to put him very high up the list because you know, at the beginning of the season, we talk about how Adrian Heath, this is really, could potentially be his last year if he does not get this Minnesota team to the playoffs. Um, You know, he, this is obviously year three of their three-year plan and that this is supposed to be the year that where they finally can make the playoffs. Now, the reason why I started to put them a little bit lower now is because Minnesota has got off to a pretty good start, especially now they have won one free time as much of road games as they did last season. So, something tells me once they open Allianz Field, they're going to start winning again and most likely they're going to make the playoffs. And if they do make the playoffs, then I think Adrian Heath is going to stay despite the fact that, that a lot of Loons fans are not really happy with the way Adrian Heath is managing this team uh, and that they feel like they, they should get a better coach to manage a Minnesota team that definitely have some good kind of players on their team. Uh, and number six, it is going to be James O'Connor. So, you know, James O'Connor so far with Orlando City, you know, he hasn't really done as, as a well job as what Jason Christ did it, it just feels like you know I think last season even though he lost a lot of game with this team it was because this team is kind of a Jason Christ kind of team and in some way it is kind of still a Jason Christ team you know the the players that they bought throughout the the last couple of seasons um are kind of still there and you know James O'Connor I think during this summer transfer window he might get a chance to start Think about spending money and start thinking about getting some new guy. And, you know, he's already they spent money to get Nani or the Orlando City board has already get, give him Nani for this season. And that, you know, I know Orlando City fans are really expecting them to make the playoffs. And, you know, if they don't make the playoffs, obviously one of the guys that they're going to definitely blame besides the front office is going to be James O'Connor that isn't really like it's kind of like he's like like the he's pretty much the the same same kind of manager as what jason christ was which is a team which is you know not a very good kind of coach but we shall see we shall see how orlando city done do throughout these rest of throughout the rest of the season uh and number five i'm gonna say it's anthony hudson and i think this one you know i kind of I kind of debate about this one because, you know, 
Anthony Hudson has definitely not done a good job with the Rapids. And we kind of knew when when Hudson was announced as the Rapids head coach, I kind of had a feeling that he probably is not going to last very long because, you know, he th- even though he has coached with New Zealand and he has kind of had a little bit of success there, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work when he comes to MLS. And sure enough, so far, you know, he's still not getting the resort for the Rapids. And despite the fact that the Rapids have spent so much money these past two seasons trying to give him the players that he needs, they're still not getting the resort. And I think at some point, you know, Hudson, he's going to have to really take responsibility for this. And that, you know, the Rapids going to have to do something about how, you know, hey, we give you so much money to... Well, we basically completely remake the team twice and and you still cannot get this team close to the playoffs. Yeah, that's when the chopping block would come. And, you know, a lot of Rapids fans has already kind of showed their displeasure of, of Hudson and said that, you know, he's not really a good manager whatsoever. So I won't be surprised if his name at the end of the season could be a little bit higher because of the fact that if the Rapids, if they don't pick up what they're doing right now, this look like it is going to be another year where they're going to be standing close to the basement where I thought for sure that maybe this this could be the, the year where they can compete for playoffs. Now, at number four, and this is going to be a bit of a surprise because this team is actually doing very well right now, but I'm putting him this... I'm putting Jim Curtin very high in this list is because a lot of Union fans hate him. And, you know, a lot of Union fans for years have been calling Jim Curtin to get fired from the Union. And obviously, as I said before in the beginning of the season, you know, Jim Curtin, he he is under a lot of pressure heading into this season. Like, I think at the beginning of the season, I would have put Jim Curtin right near the top of the list as the coach most likely could get far after this season because he only signed a one-year contract to the club and that if he does not bring success to this union team then yeah he of course is going to get fired and so far the union have definitely picked it up and that is kind of the reason why I kind of move him down a a little bit in terms of coaches that most likely will get fired but don't be surprised if the union like even if the union gets to the playoffs if they lose a playoff game something tells me Jim Curtin is not gonna gonna have another year because you know the expectation for the union is very high right now they not only want to get into the playoffs but they want to win a playoff game like this is a franchise that still have not win a playoff game and that it feel like with the squad that they have this time and the new pressing system that they're starting to figure it out, this should be finally the year where they they're going to have some playoff success. So yeah, that's why I put Jim Kern a little bit high into the list. Now we're getting into the top three, um, and the the third guy that is most likely that is gonna be fired at the end of the year is gonna be Brett Frito, and I'm. Not quite sure that I spell his last name right, but yeah, Brett Frito, he could potentially be be the third most likely coach to get fired. And, you know, right now with New England, it has definitely not got off to a good start. And, you know, the fans, they have been, been getting sick of Brett Frito coaching this team. And they've been saying that, you know, the way that he is coaching this team is completely wrong and that. He doesn't actually know how to coach this team and how to get the resort. So, yeah, the pressure is going to be definitely on Brad Frito in terms of, you know, at least get this New England team in a respectable position because as of what we saw so far in the beginning of the season, it looked like this team is is a team that looked very similar to the second half of the season where they really struggle and that most likely this team is going to come nowhere near from the playoffs. And I think if New England does finish near the bottom of the basement, Brad Frito should be fired by the the refs at the before even the season is over. And at number two is a guy that I always talk about as the guy that most likely is gonna get fired. And I kind of have I wouldn't say I have an agenda against him, but you know, Dome Torrin, we s- saw how last season, especially when he took over 
the coach for NYCFC how he wasn't getting resort whatsoever. Like, he was handed with a very talented squad and basically, like, he basically turned a team that was the best team in the league at that point to a team that was just kind of mediocre and there was even kind of threat at one point in the second half of the season that maybe they could even miss the playoffs entirely because of how how pedestrian and how bad they were in the second half of the season. Well, it looks like that kind of form that they had in the second half of the season last year is carry on to this season. I mean, right now, NYCFC is still winless. And although they only have lost one game so far, they have drawn a ton of games. And it, it isn't like the fact that some of these draw that you would say they definitely deserve to get a win. Although, to be fair, in the last game, maybe they should have got a win in that game. But, you know, it's just that for Domain Turin, if he does not get this NYCFC team start to perform, and that if NYCFC does miss the playoffs, I guarantee you Domain Turin could get far. And I guarantee you if, if NYCFC, the longer they're going to get, they're going to go winless, the more pressure that Domain Turin is going to feel, and that eventually I really think he could actually be the first one to go. I mean, I put him at number two. Two, and I kind of had a debate about putting up number one, but since I always talk about how he can potentially get, he is going to get far in the future, that's why I decided to put him at number two instead. But at number one, uh, is going to be Frank DeBoer. And this should not come with a lot of surprises because Frank DeBoer is under a lot of pressure right now with Atlanta. And, you know, Atlanta is a team they are the defending champion but right now they are they're in the bottom of the eastern conference and there is just no way in the world that atlanta united should be at the bottom of the table like you talk about i talk about how dorme turn with all the talents that that he has with nycfc of, of how how it he should at least get this team in a respectable position well for frank de boer it's the same thing, except I think Atlanta, with the talent that they have, and I know they are missing Miguel Almiron, similar to how NYCFC are kind of really miss David Villa in terms of, of making them good. They still had some really decent kind of talented player in that team, and, you know, they, they got Pity Martinez, who was supposed to be the guy that was going to replace Miguel Almiron and the guy that is going to perform for them has definitely not show up. And I won't say that with Atlanta struggle is all on Frank DeBoer because one, you know, the players they're clearly underachieving right now and two, the the schedule that they've been have with balancing CCL and also MLS is not very easy, but the thing is there's been times when you see Atlanta play and they look like the complete opposite of what they were last season and in the last two season you know this is a team that is kind of a free flowing and free scoring kind of team and are probably the most scariest attack and play some of the most entertaining soccer we have ever seen a team play in MLS and now all of a sudden with Frank DeBoer stepping up this team all of a sudden looked like the Quakes like this team just played some sideway passing some very boring kind of soccer and you know, it's no wonder Atlanta fans have been calling DeBoer head and are just absolutely fuming about the, the tactics and the way that he set up this team because this is not how Atlanta play with the way that they just play these kind of boring kind of type of soccer. And if DeBoer does not figure this out, if he doesn't just, first of all, he needs to think about changing his tactics. I know that he's trying to implement his system into this team, but it's clear that it is not working whatsoever so yeah he either need to maybe think about changing that system now that we're already six weeks into the season and Atlanta is still struggling or he could potentially be the first coach that will be 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 sacked before the end of the season and be the first coach to leave at at this season um but yeah there you have it that is pretty much it for the 10 coaches that I think could get fired or leave at the end of the season. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this list. Uh, if you agree or disagree with any of the coaches that I put on the board or this list. Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time.